G'day, this is Captain Uber, and this is a Remington 700. This is an American-made bolt-action rifle that comes to you in Fallout 4 in the form of a highly customizable standalone weapon. The Remington 700 first starts a story around the end of World War II, and basically Remington wanted to make a rifle that replaced the Model 30s that was slightly cheaper to make, a lot cheaper to make, they made it, and with improved accuracy stats and everything like that. A little bit more reliability, a little bit more durable. And they come up with the Remington 700. And there's a couple of variants that might be interesting to talk about. The M40s that the US Marines use are basically Remington 700s with a little bit of modifications and aftermarket parts. But they've been using them since the 60s. So, you know, Remington, the tried and true methods, I guess they know what they're doing if we're still using rifles around that, de uh, that day and age. Um, is it the one that they use in American Sniper? I haven't seen that one in a long time. But we'll get into the customization because we'll be here all night if I don't start talking about it. So right now we've got a standing Remington. You can have a custom Deviant which gives you plus 10% handling speed. I don't think that increases the fire rate or whether it does it might not show it here. But faster usually means better for a rifle. Right now we've got a 22 inch barrel with the standard. But you can actually add a thread to that which allow you to attach some muzzle attachments so this will probably shift the uh the thing into a different into the different attachment slot when i put it on but you can also have an 18 uh, inch threaded one just for a little bit less in the ap cost probably not that worth it especially when you're going to be sniping with this thing but up in close and range that's probably the way to go i suppose and this one has a tactical vomit barrel it's got like muzzle brakes sort of thing built in at the top there but we'll go for the threaded one and then we'll move on and we can add a 10 round magazine which gives me a little bit more ap cost but that's 10 rounds instead of five which is great very nice we'll move on right now we have nothing on the muzzle but we can have a thread protector if we want just in case we want to put a thread on and have nothing on it for no reason muzzle brake will help you increase recoil minus 25 percent and the mod will actually tell you exactly how much the uh, percentage of the stats it'll take down, which I think is actually kind of good. I quite like the, uh, I guess, the transparency on that. But honestly, I don't care for much uh, on the muzzle brake side on bolt action rifles because they fire slowly anyway. So it's not like you're wrestling with the weapon in an automatic fashion where it's uh, trying to pull away from your targets. But they've got a bunch of suppressors and you know I'm going to put these on. They're all the same um, stats, but if you want a gigantic sausage on the end of the gun, you can choose that one. Let's go for something a little bit more subtle, shall we? Very nice. Right now, we've got no legendary effects, and we shall continue to have no legendary effects, but our slot is there if you need it. Where it gets a little bit more interesting is we can actually change the uh, body on this, or the stock on this, because it's sort of all made together. And you can have a tactical variant, which um, the New South Wales coppers actually have this in their anti-terrorism units, and I believe the US Marines would use something like this, because it's got tactical rails on it, and obviously you'd have to put a stock and a grip on this, because... <laughs> it doesn't look very usable right now. So we'll go with the tactical. Why not? And there we go. It's just shifted things. I don't think these iron sights are too usable now, right now. But we'll remove them because we don't need them. Which will remove us from that attachment slot again. Now right now we can chuck on a scope if we feel like it. Um, we can have standard iron sights if we feel like as well. The MBUS iron sights. They've got a bit of glowiness about them. That's kind of neat. And a reflex sight for close range, but probably want to chuck a scope on this. And you can have some th see-through scopes um, variants of this if you feel like it, which I think I might want to utilize. So this will give you... I actually don't know. It's a medium range scope, so standard medium range I think is fine. It's a cool looking scope. There's a couple of other ones down here too. This is a long range scope, so I'm not actually sure on the numbers. I think it's uh, 4, 6, and 8. Um, for the uh, short, medium, and long scopes, respectively. So this would be eight times, and then obviously the bigger ones. This one's only a medium, and then it'll actually tell you how much you're going to be zooming in. And it's a eight. It's a thermal sight. So I might use this thing during the dark at some point. So I'll, 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 grab, I'll grab one of these on a different weapon. But for now, we'll just leave it for that. We've already got the suppressor. And we've already talked about the legendaries. You can chuck a laser sight on this if you feel like it. Might give away your position. Probably not. Plus 10% hip fire accuracy. If we want to do a no scope very close range, then that's super useful. And you can chuck 
at something on the top of the rail if you want a flashlight probably not the best thing to have on a sniper if you want to give yourself away but it's a thing you can do and another laser sight if you feel like it very nice and you can change the crosshair which will actually this is actually going to give you an idea of what it looks like yes it is quite like this and we'll pick one that suits my needs i quite like the this one the mill dot that reminds me of the 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 battle the battlefield ones the battlefield 3 what had one like that and i think the snipers in new vegas had something very similar to that if i can change the color i will change it red and you can change the dot um on the reflex lights if you feel like to very nice and there's another rail on this on the right here a rail on the bottom unfortunately you can't put a bipod on that even though they're functionally useless but aesthetics man you can chuck on iron sights if you feel like it we've already been over that and we can have some grips on this see these are going to be all different types of pistol grips because the rifle grip is gone let's go with this over molded one that looks extremely comfortable very nice and we can change the stock on this which is uh, this this one, and we'll find th th an M4 stock looking thing. That'll do. That's very nice. I quite like all of this stuff. It's very tactical looking. All right, and the material you can change it to many colors. We'll find a nice green one that that suits us. We'll... Camo Woodlands, perfect. And we can change the chambering on this thing because you don't have to change the barrel or anything, but you can change which bullets you're shooting. Right now, we're shooting 308. The least damage rifles, the rifle rounds, are these 243 Winchester, which basically turns it into a varmint rifle. Um, I'm not actually sure on the size of this, but maybe they could do a 556 or something that's around that size for a varmint rifle type approach to this. The biggest and highest, most damaging rounds here are the 338 uh, Lapua Magnums, which they're the ones that the M2, M98Bs. They, they're the ones they shoot in Battlefield 4 and also Battlefield 3, and they're big bullets. Not as big as 50 BMG, but they're getting up there. And you can change the look of the uh, of the internals, here, the, the, the bolt, and also the barrel. Bare brush looks a little bit naffy, so we'll just go powder cold coated. Got to protect your barrels, don't want to make them rust or anything. And I think that's it. Plenty of customization here. Hopefully, I've been concise enough without having this video drag on for ages. We'll make a couple more of these things and uh, we'll get going. I like how it's completely changed now. The pistol grip makes it look so different. A couple of things I should mention. You can attach standard tactical rail stuff on the top of these. You just need to chuck on the rail mount on the top. And also, no matter which ammo you actually choose, you'll always be firing the 308 rounds. And just to show you where this stands in terms of other weapons in the vanilla game on damage, we do a lot better than the sniper rifle and lever action rifle, but it does fall short a lot of the gauss rifle of the late game. Okay, you're done. Get out of here. You two, and you. On the chemistry station, you'll find a Remington 700 folder, and here you can craft a different variants of the scopes. If you've got it for a see-through scope and want to switch it over, you can do so here without having to fork out the uh, extra junk to make the parts there. So it's like you can just change it. Also, you can change the um, the magnifier on the Aerotech if you've got the magnifier attached to it, which I think is neat. And if you scroll all the way down, you get these ammo conversion kits with a bit of steel and a bit of springs. But you also need ball peen hammers and a hacksaw to do that and a gun nut rank one. So a little bit more esoteric. You'll have to go hunt for those things most likely. But they're not exactly expensive to find. And you can craft the weapon, of course, for just a few bits and pieces here and there. One thing I want to show off is that this thing actually has a little bit of variability in your scope functionality. So right now we've got the night vision scope, but clearly isn't night vision. You see, Tammy is completely invisible. If we use our designated scope button hotkey, which I've set in the mod configuration manager to be G, it brings up this small menu, which we can go from normal mode to night vision mode, and we can even use the built-in iron sights on the top there. This will only work if you've only got one of these in your inventory, so beware of that. And changing it to night vision, with the standard and night vision scopes, you can get a four or six times zoom in depending on whatever you choose, which gives you a lot of versatility on the fly, I guess. Very good functionality. 
and I put my rifles on the ground so I could do this. If I pick these up, the game will detect that I've got more in my inventory and won't allow me to do it. Righto, so here we are outside of Nepenset Park. The time is around uh, 7 o'clock, bright and early start today. And uh, this is what the thing looks like in third person. We've already seen this thing a ton in first person, but this is the one with the hunting stock. It's got a uh, tactical sight of the holographic variety and a muzzle brake. And this is the one that I made look like a varmint rifle. And I'm going to use it here because I can't think of anywhere else where I could conceivably use it in a good fashion. And this is the one with that variable scope that I showed you before. But it is set to night vision, so probably not a great idea to use it during the day, I don't think. We'll move on from here and we'll start shooting some Milek dudes. We'll see how we go. We'll, we'll sneak and pretend we're using like a, a hunting rifle or a varmint rifle from New Vegas. That was the first kill there. Not too bad. And we've only got, we've got basically no zoom in at all. But that's okay. The sight says they're tiny, right? So we can line up shots fairly easily. And we'll get you... Nice and torso shotted. Maybe we'll go for the headshots if we want to show off a little bit. But I'm guessing that's going to be kind of it for this rifle. Because the varmints at this point have been dealt with. So we'll move on. And the next targets are going to be these raiders here. There's not a whole lot of them. But I do want to get this one out of the way nice and fast. So what we'll do is we'll take out that one who's on the move. The turret's not going to move. So that'll be an easy shot. There's one of them down there take him out with i believe a torso shot that one's gone all the way over there potentially we could use this thing to great effect in close range if we felt like it good old hit scan bullets won't do you wrong but bugger off phone twitter needs to learn how to shut its mouth or rather i need to put my phone on silent before i start recording that it's very distracting and i think we're kind of done with the raiders here i think these are all ghoul raiders because they live around radiation yeah there's not much else going on here but the main target is going to be the gunners around up top but whilst we're out here and swinging through this place maybe i feel like there should be more raiders there i want to take on some muties and there is a sizable amount of mutations around here and someone's taking them on what's going on here we've got butchers warlords and maybe maybe a raiders wandered off into this this way it's a caravan guard. I need you out of the way, so we'll take you out. That's that's technically a murder, but the super mutants did it. There's there's ample evidence. So we'll take out these super mutants before they run into the gunners, just so we get some nice shots on them. Some nice sneak criticals. Never mind. Looks like we're done for here. We've we've been made, but that's okay. Looks like we can get sniper knockdowns with this, so occasionally these dank quick scopes and nice throw of the flashbang that's actually choked and missed me all together but if we can get a dank quick scope we can sometimes drop them down all right let's move over to the hunting one and we get a decent amount of shots for a single action rifle i suppose let's go for a critical here just to see what kind of damage we can get kind of disappointed thought we'd have a little bit more bang there more bang for our buck. Here's a bash animation, by the way. And in case you're wondering, it is possible to skip the rechambering animation by uh, simply bashing, which is good sometimes um, because sometimes you just want to get that slight little bit of extra DPS as you go around. Now, I think that's about it for the super mutants here. So, looks like we're ready to turn our main focus onto the gunners, which are not in this direction at all. The fog, unfortunately, has taken over here. So, one second. Who says I can't control the weather around here? We can do basically everything else in this game. If I've got an army of thoughts powerful enough to take on the entire NCR, I think I, think I can change the weather when I feel like it. So what I'll be doing here is trying to get to some higher ground because we all know the snipers love high ground. He goes down. Uh, we've, we've got a limited amount of resistance and a lot of visual cover as we're going through the church here. So that's what we'll intend to do. And we'll sneak up here because up this spire there's going to be a dude with a rocket launcher. Not paying attention now, are we? Now we can actually use this point, this vantage point from up here to get a lot of sniping done. I feel like we're going to get detected eventually. And damn it, you kind of just 
got out of the way as soon as I was pulling the trigger. And we missed that fella. I feel like the uh, laser sight here might be giving me away a little bit. There we go. Or is it... Or am I having problems with the projectile overrides? Where's your power armor? Full at two moment right there. But uh, honestly, if you're not wearing power armor, that's, that's a you problem, mate. And we've got some gunners over here. That is the gunner that has one of the the unique... Uh, you're cloaked too. Good for you, man. Yes, he's got one of the unique service rifles that is powered by Gauss technology. And we have to bash him and no scoop him at close range. It's kind of hard to see where he is. Can't see him. There we go. Get out of here. Where is it? Junkies. Never mind. He just had a Fallout 76 weapon. How very illegal. Since we're in close quarters, we may as well go back to this because the stealth plan never works in broad daylight. Either does the shooting them plan. Eat lead, gunner. Just ignore the ignore the gunnered skull on her back here. Yeah, it's only because she used to be a gunner. Lacks the aesthetic set. There's the rechambering animation in third person, by the way. We'll knock this guy into next Tuesday. And we'll pop the reload there. And probably haven't shown the reload off in uh, third person yet. So we'll take a look at that when we uh, next rechamber. Although it looks like we're back into caution here. And whoops. I keep pressing alt because of muscle memory, right? In see-through scopes, you press uh, E to toggle your steadying of the scope. And it's uh, a bit of a pain. Never mind. I've been outflanked. Well, time to use a little bit of gun foo here. One, two, few, one, two, few, and a little bit more few. That should be enough to deal with these gunners. A little bit of extra damage from the gun foo will do me pretty well. Also, that guy's got one as. What was that? Thanks, Vats. Much appreciated. Anyways, moving on. We'll keep shooting at the gunners doing pretty well here although the range at the moment is being slightly cucked because the suppressor generally does that you can defeat the range most of the time what are you doing down there i'm gonna fall down if i keep doing that um yeah generally the longer barrel ones will be good but i think that's an assault on dominator down there it is in fact well we might be seeing that thing a little bit later but i think at this point we can take it to him we'll even grab the varmint rifle out where are you mate there you are crit through the bus see you later and we're almost done here not the cleanest run that i've ever had through quincy but i think it lends a little bit better to the sniper rifle if i'm uh using it here rather than the standard places where i usually go and hello all right, that's just a... That's a, a Soltron Dominator attacking more caravan guards. They're back for revenge. I think there's also a turret right here. Take you out, mate. There we go. And we can plug a USB into this Soltron. And can you stop poking me, all right? There we go. Turn that right off. And bang. See you later. That's how you do it. Like a robotics expert, Lily taught Bridget that move for sure. And honestly, you get the critical. No head glitching on my server. There we go, nice little stagger there. And that seems to be all of them. Hey, caravan guard, no hard feelings, right? I don't even know which caravan they're protecting, but something's, something's going on here. I'll, I'll trade you. I saved your life. Jeez, you look worse for wear. Looking a lot better than the other one I shot, though. I mean, the other one, the Super Mutant shot. And with that, let's move on. Also, can wear weapons and they look good on your back. I really like this sniper rifle mod. The M40, I used to use that a lot in Battlefield 4. Back when I used to play on console, that's what I used to grind up my way to being like the true sniper with the one that fires the 408. So I think it's the intervention, but... It was not a good choice. I probably should have used basically anything else. But the feeling's still there. Quite liked it. Okay, night is falling on the Commonwealth. So I can switch over to my night vision scope and whiff a gigantic target like that. Uh, that was obviously the 
the weapon mod bugging and not me. Like, that can't have been me. I feel like I was right on it, though. I'll tell you that much. Anyways, we'll use our tactical scope to tactically annihilate these guys from a safe tactical distance. Thank you. And we've got some spotlights over there. It's not super smart for me to have those around. So we'll just sort of sit here and we'll pop heads left and right. Time for a quick reload. And there it is in third person. I remembered this time. Very nice. I, I quite like the animations. I, I can't say anything bad of them at all. They're nice and quick. They look smooth. Very nice stuff. And of course I'm still alive. How are you still alive? Operation Stealth has uh, failed again. Have you got one too? No, you've got a Dragunov. Get get out get out of my face with that. Anyways, so now we can witness the full power of this thing. Fully armed and operational battle station. Fire at will, Bridget. That's a nice hit. And uh, the second one definitely gets it there. Nice little 4.4 uh, times multiplier on the headshot. They stack together real quick like. And looks like it's time for a bit of sweeping. And... And honestly, what I'm going to do is, uh, stand by, is I'm going to use these built-in iron sights. And with the power of editing, you didn't see that whole thing. There we go. Look at that. Pinpoint accuracy at close distance. What could you want? And we've aggroed the giant Myalek dude. Let's go back into night vision six times, and we'll start pinging at him from here. I think that was a headshot and a knockdown at the same time. Now, we can totally cheese this fight, too, because there's no way in bloody hell is Todd going to let the NPCs develop pathing to get up here. So, he's going to run, and he's going to run so far that the combat music will go away. He's taken some pretty good cover there. Full cover still nailed him right through it, but I believe that was what they referred to as a dodge. But now, the game will figure out that, yes, he can reach me. At some point, he's actually gone free willy mode here. Do doesn't want to bite of this. Also, you'll note that I'm running around with this thing. None of the uh, 3D models are full precision. So, look, the wet mod works with it pretty well. And I'm going to snipe you through the water. I'd have to assume that the bullet's velocity might be affected a lot by water. <laughs> Maybe? I don't know. I'm not a ballistics expert, but I feel like with the resistance and, like, it's a lot easier for, uh, things. I'm shooting at a health bar here in a, a faint silhouette. I don't think I can draw this guy any closer. Okay, I think we can call this one a win. We are currently at Libertalia, which is, yeah, he, he's run so far off course that he'll never get back. So I guess we'll just put him out of his misery and, uh, kill him. Okay, we're gonna kill the Wendigo, and honestly, we've destroyed enough gunners today, so we'll leave all of that alone, and, uh, just need to get you to sit still for a second, my man. Very hard to track. Shouldn't be. Leading targets unnecessarily, not helping me. Gotta get these drag scopes, although I'm a hard scoping scrub at the moment. Now, now I can't even hit these no scopes. If they did give sniper rifles this kind of hip fire accuracy in those games, you'd never want to bloody use anything else. For a balancing factor, they usually make them have poor hip fire accuracy. I don't know if the spread is massive or anything. You see people get no scopes from bloody ages away. They're spinning around and everything. Are you gonna do anything or what? Hm, guess not. Too good. Okay, now it's raining, so we'll be extra sneaky and stealthy. And I want to get this right, at least once. And unfortunately, the super mutant dude is aggroed because Swan is, but we'll fix this in a second. There we go. That's one problem dealt with. Now for the rest, which I believe are just a bunch of assorted robots from Automatron. So they'll go down fairly easily. Swan is currently aggroed to an extent, but uh, mostly against those chumps, which can sort of see me but can't i want to see if i can get a cheeky little sniper knockdown here so i'll give the raiders a little bit more never mind that's not happening so this time it'll be this will be a full fight of uh of brilliant sniper knockdowns and sneak criticals right a whole lot of nothing we're seeing here 
gotta wonder if I can go to the built-in iron sight and if it's still a scope, will it knock him down? This will be interesting to see if we can do that, but obviously... Oh, ooh, okay, we can. That's good information. That's nice. And everything's working out pretty well. I'm gonna try to go for headshots now just to get this uh, done quickly and humanely as possible. And I don't think that there boat that you've got in your arm is going to protect you forever, although you are getting close. I must have gotten stuck on something. Another cheeky knockdown there. We'll keep going. Just gotta find the head. There we go. Is that it? It isn't. No, there it is. 2100. I was wondering. I feel like I was getting close. It's such a giant target, you'd wonder why I'd missed so many times. And another knockdown. Looks like this one's a nice big fella. Just as you will be in about five seconds. And another one. Another one bites the dust. Goodbye, swan. We'll see you next time. You're lucky you get reincarnated all the time. Otherwise, it might get a little bit silly. And, yep. Six. That's an 11 hour day. Or is it 6 a.m.? That'd be 20. Actually, we've been jumping around the place because I switched the game time to night. Also, um, I've got a key, where a, like a hot key for the time thing, which normally it's meant to send you into first person, but uh, if you do it in third person, something truly horrific happens. No, thank you. And on that horrifying note, I think it's time to, to end the video there. If you are interested in seeing this more than your game, check out the links in the description. Observant Radstag, not this time. Alright, yep, links in the description. This one might be a PC only thing because there's a lot of functionality embedded in the mod configuration menu, which in itself requires Fallout 4 script extender. So that makes it just unable to be used with consoles, unfortunately. But there may be alternatives out there. I'll be having a look. Thank you very much for watching, guys.